Well, BBC executives, past and present, have been laying into each other in public. The former Director General, Mark Thompson, accused the chairman of the BBC Trust, Lord Patton, of misleading Parliament over the £25 million in payoffs made to departing executives, mostly during his tenure. It's the first salvo in a war between the execs and marks a return to the disastrous battles over the Savile Affair a year ago. The two sides will face off on Monday in front of the Public Accounts Committee. It's just the latest in a series of extremely damaging scandals, all centering on Mark Thompson's management of the BBC. Now, Channel 4 News has obtained the first television interview with Mr Thompson about what he knew about Savile and when. Porrick O'Brien has this exclusive report. <laughs> Times Square, the heart of a city named after its newspaper. Its boss, Mark Thompson, the man who ran the BBC. Once upon a time, himself and the trust chairman, the happy couple. But Thompson's barely touched down to face MPs on Monday and divorce proceedings turned toxic. July, the chairman of the BBC Trust was asked by MPs why he didn't know about giant payouts to departing executives. If you um, uh, call in due course um, the, a previous director general of the BBC, um, I will be as interested as you are in why we didn't know. Now, Thompson counters that finger pointing with a right hook. His submission to MPs was leaked. It's detailed. It boils down to this. Emails that appear to show that Chris Patton knew about non-contractual excessive payouts. Uh, I'll deal with it next week um, and have no concerns at all about the remarks which Mr Thompson has made, except that at the end of the day I don't want to say or do anything which damages the BBC. Some things are certain. All the warring parties will be in the same room together on Monday. It'll be heated, and what seems like an eternity of anti-eating itself continues. It's a sad, sad situation. Who cares? The people of Harlow, Essex do. Last year, they paid about five million in license fees, equivalent to what was paid to 10 departing BBC bosses. It seems to be the hardest word. One of them got nearly a million pounds. Multiple scandals are changing relationships here with the BBC. I didn't get a payout when I lost my last job, so why should they? That's put me off the BBC. Well, what's put you off the BBC? Uh, all the scandal that's happening, you know. What, what like Savile and all that? Savile and all of them, yeah. Really, you're not watching the BBC as much anymore? No. What no. are you watching instead? I watch Al Jazeera. Predatory and pervasive, the appalling scale and nature of Savile's sex abuse revealed. A year ago, the seeds for the last crisis were sown with Savile. After the ITV exposure film, the BBC shaken to its core. As the editor who dropped the Savile investigation steps aside, the BBC is engulfed in a firestorm. Mark Thompson was boss of the BBC when Newsnight dropped its investigation into Savile. Then the BBC ran Christmas tributes to a man now known to have sexually assaulted hundreds of children. Eight months before the scandal broke, this journalist revealed that Newsnight had spiked the story. He's continued asking questions of the BBC and its ex-boss. In January 2012, I contacted the BBC press office. In April of 2012, I made an FOI request to the BBC. Uh, in May of 2012, I contacted Mark Thompson's chief of staff, and in August of 2012, I also contacted the BBC on behalf of the Sunday Times. Mark Thompson has always insisted he was never told that the Newsnight allegations related to sexual abuse. He told his new employers, During my time as Director General of the BBC, I never heard any allegations or received any complaints about Jimmy Savile. Thompson also says the newspaper articles that appeared after Newsnight abandoned its investigation just passed him by. But then, during an interview with a journalist, he seemed to contradict this. By this stage, I think it is clear to me um, uh, that it's it, 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 it allegations um, uh, which relate to um, sexual abuse of some kind. But the allegations of abuse by Savile? By, by Jimmy Savile. Soon afterwards, though, he retracted the statement, saying he'd misspoke. 
The BBC inquiry into what went wrong was led by Nick Pollard, the former head of Sky News. He cleared Mark Thompson, concluding he had never been told about allegations of abuse by Savile. But then it emerged that just five days before the report was published, Helen Bowden, the woman in charge of BBC News, had dropped a bombshell. She told Pollard she had now remembered a conversation with Mark Thompson way back in December 2011. In a letter to MPs, she confirmed... I told Mark what I knew, that Newsnight had been investigating 30-year-old allegations of sexual abuse of teenage girls by Jimmy Savile at an approved school in Surrey. But this wasn't reflected in the Pollard report. Miles Gosselet has been doggedly pursuing the ex-DG for nearly two years. One last shot. We sent him to New York. Why does he want to talk to Mark Thompson? To try to get to the bottom of exactly what Thompson knew about the Newsnight story. Why does it matter? Because who knew what was the subject of a licence pair funded inquiry. And since then, Mark Thompson has not done a British interview, despite repeated requests. After days of trying, Miles finally met Mark. I was just wondering, have you told the truth to the New York Times about your knowledge of the Savile scandal, what you knew and when you knew I, it? I've told the truth to everyone. I told the, told the truth to Nick Pollard, I told the truth to the New York Times, and I told the truth publicly. I have nothing to hide. I've done nothing wrong in the Pollard... So you never heard any allegations about Jimmy Savile while you were running the BBC? Uh, the details, you, you know, I heard briefly that there had been a, 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 a newslight investigation into uh, Jimmy Savile. Yes. I was not told what the allegations were. Nick Pollard understood and heard all of the facts and decided when he'd heard all of the facts didn't that you ask my what, account. Didn't you ask what the news investigation was about? It's important to say, Miles, that there are no unanswered questions. All of these questions were considered very carefully by Nick what, Savile. Why has Helen Bowden contradicted you? She says that she did tell you what uh, the, the uh, Newsnight inquiry let's, was let's, about. Let's, let's be clear. There was a very brief conversation between Helen Bowden and myself. Yes. We, we have, I now know, very... We have slightly different recollections about this conversation. Yes. Nick Pollard was aware of this. He considered this fact and decided at the end of his investigation that he had no reason to doubt my, my, my version of events. That is what happened. Let's, let's be straightforward about it. I am. You are trying artificially to create a conspiracy theory... Absolutely where none, not. ..where none exists. There is no conspiracy here. Every question you have raised was considered by Nick Pollard and has been answered by him in his report. Every single one. There are no unanswered You told questions. the New York Times the that you'd is, never heard any allegations. Is that true? If I'm, let, me, let me proceed with my point, which is this. There are no unanswered questions. What's happening is, in an, in, in an attempt to invent a conspiracy theory, you're pretending that questions which in fact have been answered, have not been answered. I've told the truth about this. I've never told anything other than the truth. You the never heard thought. any allegations about Jimmy Savile while you I've were running the I'm BBC. You it. never asked what Newsnight's investigation was about. Is that correct? I've told nothing. You never I, asked? You're a journalist by trade. I was, I, I you learned, know, you I, know that I, asking I, questions I learned, is key. I you, learned about this investigation from a brief conversation, informal conversation, and I was told very shortly afterwards by senior colleagues in news that the investigation had been abandoned. Which senior colleagues? Well, to be honest, my recollection at the time, Helen Bowden forgot that the conversation had taken place at all initially. I couldn't remember which senior colleague it was but with. But she's remembered now. But the key, but the key thing was, and she told me, Pollard. Yes. The key thing, the key why, thing... Why, what, the key why, thing is, is, why is it that your story is believed and hers isn't? The, the key thing is, this was a conversation about an investigation which she herself thought had failed. The question isn't whether Bowden was believed, it's why her late account wasn't reflected, and Thompson's was. We asked Nick Pollard. He stands by his report and feels it would be inappropriate to offer further analysis. On a more general point, he has acknowledged that he had to contend with incomplete or absent recollections. We didn't, I think, get absolutely to the point where we could say with categorical 100% insurance, this is precisely what happened uh, and, and why, and there's a clear explanation for it all. Why did you not get to that, do you think? Well, partly because of either conflicting recollections by, by people or no recollections offered to us. In other words, people said, I just can't remember what I did on that day. Did As you find you, that credible? To some extent. 
not completely. The crises have licence peers asking, what's wrong with the BBC? One of the Newsnight journalists who had the abandoned Savile story is in no doubt. What we've seen, unfortunately, is a culture at the BBC where no one feels they can admit that they've done anything wrong. So mistakes happen, whether it's Savile or McAlpine or whatever. The blame flies around, but no one feels able to hold their hand up. And I think what you lose in all that fog and noise is any clarity about what mistakes were made and, crucially, how they will be stopped in future. Out of the fog and noise, one more ghost for Mark Thompson. Soon after he left the BBC, plans to digitise its archive fell apart. The cost to the licence fee payer, over £100 million. And all of it closely watched by the sharp suits of Times Square. I think they're worried about him. They don't want to make any false moves at the moment because that would have a, a more disastrous effect on the stock. Um, they don't want to look like they're just dropping him because of a little bit of negative publicity, but if there was a serious allegation that was substantiated, he'd be gone. The competition would say that. Others have a more rounded take on Thompson's CV. Britain always overestimates the way that its scandals impact on the American commercial marketplace. Thompson was an incredibly savvy head of the BBC overall. He did wonders for the BBC. Again, you look at iPlayer, you look at the BBC website. They hired him for his business now. Under Thompson's tenure, the grey lady has colour back in her cheeks. New York Times revenue and its digital circulation are doing very well. On Monday, though, all eyes on the clash of the media titans. Thompson v Patton. But this story is about public accountability, about who ends up answerable. Answerable to us. <laughs>